Here we are in Kinindo, not too far from the lake. This is one of the roads my wife and I used to walk on. But it's completely flooded. It used to be dry. You could walk on it just with shoes. Now you'd need rubber boots or even more than that almost. This road here used to be dry too. Now it's full of water, as you can see. Nice view of the mountains in Congo. Yeah, see what happens, all the water comes from up the hill, comes down these canals and down this canal over here and makes it just a complete mess of everything. That's the Martin Luther uh, University. And uh, it's pretty bad right here. Then it's not too bad sand past that and then it's a massive lake. Let's walk it and see here. So you can walk on these poor tie thing, or not poor ties, but you can walk on these little canal things, but you have to be careful because they, uh, <laughs> the way they do them, they don't cement them very good, so they fall apart as you're walking on them. So it's definitely a risk you take when you walk on those. So when possible, you want to avoid it. You might just walk over this way. It'd be easier. Then I wouldn't have to fall on anything. Definitely need rubber boots around here. Flooding's quite bad. These people have spent millions of millions of frambos. Millions. There have been trucks on this road constantly for well, I'd say almost three months now. And this sand that we're walking on right now, they just put this down a couple days ago. It's a never ending battle. It's just an idea of anyone that lives by the lake, Tanganyika is dealing with this right now. And uh, there's really no win in the war, it's just a matter of getting through the season, I guess. Some people say mid-May, it should get better. Others say beginning of May. And then even others are saying like June, July. So I honestly don't know. Like take for instance this house. They've put literally hundreds of dump trucks. I mean big dump trucks. Hundreds of them in there, loads. And see they still like, it hasn't accomplished anything here because like, they're still full of water. It's crazy. And then if we keep walking down this road, you see it gets even worse over here. This is kind of the last bastion of somewhat dry ground. See the canal there, it's not even high enough. It just overflows here. You see it's quite bad there. This house right here, when we walked by, it used to be dry. Maybe the odd puddle. But just in about a week, I'd say, this is about knee deep in there. It'd be higher than my rubber boots. So this is what we're dealing with. And then if we keep going, you can hear the pump. You won't hear anything I say at this point, but I'll keep talking. So you can hear the pump. This is what our setup is. Sometimes one pump, sometimes two, sometimes none. It's never quite one. And this is what it looks like over here. Just have this big lake. They have it sort of blocked off right here and there. And they're basically just pumping water right into the street. This street used to be walkable. I mean, it was always a little muddy, but it was definitely walkable. It used to be dry land on that church over there. And now it's uh, above people's waist. They've had it blocked off to big trucks for two months, I think. A month and a half at least. And this right here, if I walked in that, it would go right up past my waist. That's how, uh, how bad it is. All that green stuff down at the end of the road, 
none of that was there before and now it's grown right over so whatever those uh, weeds are or those plants they grow really fast so that's just an idea of the flooding here in Kenyan though just from one road <laughs> 